I made off Oliver, and this is the lesson about converting percents and fractions to each other. There's a very useful relationship that we want to make use of here. I've got it written down already. You can always take the percent sign and trade it in for over 100. So this guy right here, we're going to get a lot of use of. And there'll be occasion when we go the other way. We'll have over 100 and trade it in for the percent sign. But let's show you how we can use this. Right below here, I've got a fraction, or I should say a percent, 25% that we want to change to a fraction. And uh, notice, I can use this relationship, take the percent and trade it in for over 100. So simply do this to write the 25, but instead of the percent sign, trade it in for over 100. Well, guess what? That gives you a fraction all set to go here. Now all you have to do is just reduce this. We, of course, have that standing rule that fractions always need to be reduced. 25 goes once here. It goes four times here. And so we get 25% equal to one-fourth. Okay, well now, let's go the other way with this. Okay. Here we are. To convert a fraction or percent, you can first change the fraction to a decimal. Let's do that, and then we'll show you a second way here, too. Well, first thing we do is take one-fourth, turn it into a decimal value. This is 1 divided by 4, which is 0.25. Now, you may recall, of course, to convert a decimal to a percent, you have to move the decimal point two places. The decimal value has to be the smaller looking, so to make it look larger, we'd have to move the decimal point two places to the right. That means we could end up with 25 decimal point percent over here. Remember, whenever you convert a decimal to a percent, the larger looking number has to be the number in front of the percent sign. The smaller looking number is the decimal value. And we moved it two places, so the 0.25 equals 25 percent. Now, here's an alternative way of getting this same value. Let's start out with this one quarter that we have, but now I can multiply 4 by 25 to change it into 100. So what I'm going to do is multiply both top and bottom of this fraction by 25. Here we go. Now, 25 over 25 equals 1. Whenever you multiply something by 1, you do not change its value. So the fraction we get from doing this is still going to equal 1 fourth. Let's multiply it out. 1 times 25 is 25, 4 times 25 is 100. Well, of course, you know 25 one hundredths is the same as 1 fourth. It can be reduced back to it. Now, why did I want to get this 100 down here? Well, remember this relationship we mentioned to begin with up here? The percent sign can be traded in for over 100. Well, we're going to go the other way. We're going to take the over 100 and trade it in for the percent sign. And we'll get the same value here. What happens now? Turn around and write the 25, but take the over 100 and trade it in for the percent sign. And there we are, 25%. Well, let's start looking at some examples now of converting percents and uh, fractions back and forth to each other. Here's the uh, first one we want to look at. To convert to a fraction 10%. Well, here's the easiest thing to do for this. Remember, we can take the percent sign and trade it in for over 100. So here that is. And then just write the 10 on top of that. Here we are. I just rewrote the 10. Okay. And then what I did was take the percent sign and trade it in for over 100. Now, of course, this can be reduced. Don't forget, you always have to do that. 10 goes once here, and 10 goes in 110 times, so our final fraction value, 1 tenth. Okay, next up, convert to a fraction, 0.4%, or as folks sometimes say, 4 tenths of 1%. But anyway, here it is. Now, the key again on this, you can take and convert the uh, percent sign into over 100, so I could write this as 0.4 over 100. 
Okay, there I'm taking the percent sign and trading it in for the over 100. Well, the next thing is, we don't like to have fractions that have decimals or other fractions in them. So, if I multiply this top by 10, I could move the decimal point one place and make a 4 out of this. So, since I don't want to change the value of my whole answer, I multiply both top and bottom by 10. Remember, of course, again, 10 over 10 equals 1, so that's not going to change the value. But what it does is this. I move the decimal point one place to the right when I move 4 tenths by 10, multiply it here. I end up with 4, and downstairs, 10 times 100 gives me 1,000. Okay, now notice what I've got is a nice whole number here, both top and bottom. Simply reduce this. I know 4 will go into both of these guys. 4 goes into 4 once. 4 goes into 1,250 times. So my final answer here, 1 over 250. Well, again, let's review what we did here. You can always take a percent and convert it to a fraction by taking the percent sign and trading it in for over 100. But we had a decimal value in this fraction, only one decimal place. So if we multiply both top and bottom by 10, which is equal to 1, it won't change the value, but it'll change what it looks like. We ended up with moving the decimal point one place to the right, 4 upstairs, and 10 times 100, 1,000 downstairs. And then, of course, just reduce top and bottom by 4 to get our final answer of 1 over 250. Okay, let's take a look at uh, the next problem here. We want to convert this to a fraction as well. 262%. Again, I'm going to take the 262, but convert the percent sign in for over 100. Okay, well now at this stage, we've got the fraction, but of course we got to see if we can reduce it. 2 will go into both top and bottom here. It goes 131 times upstairs and 50 downstairs. So we end up here with 131 over 50. We can't reduce it anymore. We can leave the answer as an improper fraction like that. And of course, if you wanted to make a mixed number out of it, you could do that also. Okay, here's yet another one where we're going to do something very similar. We've got 471%. What I want to do is change this to a fraction. So the first thing I do is write the number, just the way it is, 471. But then I'm going to trade the percent sign in for over 100. Well, in this particular case, there's nothing we can reduce top and bottom. So since we can leave it as an improper fraction like this, this is where this one stays right there. Now, let's start converting fractions to percents. And if you're ever lucky enough to get a guy with 100 downstairs, you can use our favorite conversion. Remember, of course, you can take the percent and trade it in for over 100. Okay, well, that's exactly what we're going to do, but we're going to do it backwards. We're going to take the over 100 and trade it in for percent. So I just write the top, the 39, and then the over 100 part gives me the percent sign. So we get 39% directly. Well, here's some other guys that we also have to convert to percents. And if the downstairs is a number which we can easily multiply by a whole number to get it to 100, the quickest way to do this uh, is to use that little relationship we have. Percent equals over 100. What do I have to multiply 5 by to change it to 100? Well, i got to multiply it by 20. So if I multiply both top and bottom by 20 here, that, of course, equals 1 again. So I'm not changing the value of the 3 fifths. I'm just going to change what it looks like. Well, okay, what happens when I do this? Well, upstairs I get 3 times 20, which is 60. Downstairs, 5 times 20, which is 100. That's exactly what we wanted. And, of course, what's this equal? Well, I just write the 60. And, of course, take the over 100 and trade it in for the percent sign. So there's 60%.
Well, you might guess that we're going to do the same type of thing on this next guy. And here we have uh, convert to a percent, 1 25th. Well, it's very easy to take 25 and convert it to 100. Just multiply by 4. So I'll do the same thing top and bottom here. Okay. Upstairs I get 4 times 1, which is 4. Downstairs I get 4 times 25, which is 100. That's exactly what we wanted. And, of course, remember again our relationship. The percent sign equals over 100. So what I'm going to do is rewrite the 4. But take the over 100 and trade it in for the percent sign and there we are 4%. Well you're not always going to get nice values that you can uh, easily change to 100. 45 is a good example of this and so what can we do with uh, this particular one to change it to a percent? Well we can go back to the other method we talked about earlier and that is turn around and just take and convert 11 45ths to a decimal. So if you did that, get your calculator out and take 11 and divide it by 45, or do it by longhand to uh, two or three decimal places rounded, you'd get 0.244. Well, okay, remember once you've got a decimal value, we know that we can change that to a percent by moving the decimal point two places, but we have to, of course, move it to make the larger looking number in front of the percent sign over here. So, which way do we have to move it two places? Two places to the right. That'll give me 24.4 in front of the percent sign. And this, of course, is the larger looking value in front of the percent sign, the smaller looking decimal, so we know we went the right direction. Okay. Well, here's the last example. Convert to a percent, seven and a half. Now, of course, most of you probably remember that one half equals 50 percent, but let's show you the way you can handle this one. Here's what we're going to do with this. Uh, we can turn around now and say, okay, I want to make this into a decimal value, and... I can write this as 7.5. That's the same as 7 and 1 half. Now, if I'm going to convert this decimal to a percent, I need to be able to move the decimal point two places, so I'll add another zero here to be able to do that. And, of course, we recall that we always want to have the larger-looking number in front of the percent sign over here. So that means I have to move the decimal point two places to the right, so I end up with 750. You can put the decimal point there or leave it off, your choice. But the 750, definitely larger looking than the 7.50, and we did move the decimal point two places, so we know we're correct in that.